Hello and welcome to episode number 29. That's 2 9, season 2, episode 9. How you doing, Oz? Man, I am scared. I am here in a concrete room in a bunker because the apocalypse is nigh. So I hope we survive this episode. Jordan, are you safe? I am safe. I'm safe because LeBron has come and saved Cleveland from the terror <laughs> of losing. How are you, Sylvia? Well, I'm doing just great, thank you. All great things happen in Cleveland, as we all know. So, representing Cleveland for the Southern California folks, glad to be back here on Excel TV. And I am scared. Here is a concrete room. Whoa, that is weird. The ghost of Oz. So I hope we survive this episode. So, uh, so welcome. Uh, this is Rick Grantham, rickgrantham.com, also of Excel.tv. Uh, tonight is brought to you by Northeast Florida, the, uh, the map behind me, the world map, and, uh, and Excel TV coffee. As you know, I've spent all night pretty much painting the trim of this house, trying to get it ready for sale. So it's brought to you by coffee because when painting trim keeps you up till 4 a.m., coffee. It's worth for a And hey there, Oz, I, I really love your, your apocalypse Papa Smurf earbuds. It's really working for you. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. So, uh, so Jordan, would you take it away with last week's challenge? I absolutely sure will. So we had one of the greatest Excel challenges we've ever had because it was hard. And it was sort of related to Excel. And it was come up uh, with by Sylvia. Now, here's the thing. Is here's how I work. I like, to, I like to make people think I have a binder full of binders just filled with questions. <laughs> but I don't. And every once in a while, I reach out and say, hey, Sylvia, the show's about to start in 10 minutes. Do you have a good idea? for an Excel question. And I thought this was a brilliant one, but as it turns out, our audience doesn't really know their movies that well. So the question was, what fantastic cult movie also just celebrated its 30-year anniversary? And you know what the best part about this? I just noticed that apostrophe in the it's, right? That's not the right one. So if you pointed that out, you would have won the prize. But nobody even noticed my punctuation mistake. Now, what is the answer? Well, let's find out. Do, by the way, do you do any of you have a guess? Yeah, you I think there was a guess? guess on the website that it was um, that there was Back to the Future. Oh, oh the let, second clue, right. The second clue, in case you missed it on Twitter. The last the, Cleveland is this next clue. It is another thing that Excel and this movie have in common. There's a famous line in the movie that includes the word Cleveland. Yeah, I got nothing. Oz? You got nothing. Nothing. Rock and roll. Boing, boing. We, we paid a lot Cleveland. of money for that animation. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, okay, so the answer was so, Final Tap. No. Can I just tell you the worst part about this? I didn't even know that. <laughs> I, no, I've never even seen Final Tap. What? <laughs> you, yeah, you I'm sorry. I know. Have, you should turn in your Cleveland card right now. Well, I've only been here for a week. <laughs> So, so as is the case, nobody won. Um, if you had pointed out my punctuation mistakes, I probably would have let you won, let you win. See, I made another one right there. So let's go with a with a straight up Excel challenge. So many functions in Excel have the same name in Power Pivot. And by Power Pivot, I mean DAX. And what I'm looking for is a function in Excel with a different name than its DAX counterpart. So what's a good example? Well, a good example might be large, right? So large in the function. Um, just you know, and then you have a k. You you can return what's the first largest, second largest. Um, same thing with small, max, min, average. All these things um, have ex are Excel functions, and they have counterparts in Power Pivot. So I'm looking for two functions, one in Excel and one in Power Pivot, that do exactly, and I mean exactly the same thing, but go by a different name. And I actually learned this the first time I met Bill Jelen. Um, many moons ago, <laughs> a while ago. Um, and so this is where I got that question from. So that's what I'm looking for. You have to name the function, the set of functions. So I guess I should say name two functions. The set of functions um, in Excel and Power Pivot, they do the same thing but go by different names. Now, as of speaking with Bill uh, years ago, there was only one I think that we thought of 
uh, or that he thought of, I should say. But I think there may be more now. So I say A, you can name A function, any function will do. As usual, we will pick the winner from, randomly from the stack of thousands of correct entries that we get. <laughs> and from there, we will, have, we will send them something from our prize bin. I'm not sure what it is yet, but we do have lots of interesting things coming. So remember, this challenge will be on Facebook later on this week. Also, check us out on Excel TV, uh, Excel.TV, the website, and at Excel TV, and also any of our social media platforms. So back to you, Rick. Well, you know, it's something whenever the, the person giving the challenge has never seen the movie that is the answer to the challenge. And I guess that's just what happens when a, when a 29-year-old <laughs> says 30 years ago. Uh, mm. that. That's a fair point. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so, hey, we're very happy to have back Sylvia Yuhaz, a.k.a. Exil. Yep. We could have her back every time. It's a popular segment. Certainly she's a friend of the show, was here for our first episode, and has uh, been here quite a bit ever since. We, we talked with her quite a bit at the past conference, you know, gosh, I want to say six weeks or so ago there. And, man, I was, I was excited to see the status of how her book was coming along. And as we were sitting there, maybe have a cocktail or two, Sylvia brought out what was a lot of really cool stuff related to a book that she's writing. So, Sylvia, would you mind uh, sharing that with everybody and, and, uh, and talking a bit about that? Uh, I would, Rick. So, um, as you were saying, yes, I am involved in a uh, Excel cocktail book. And uh, to be honest, I get a lot of glazed over looks on people's faces when I mention, you know, you're writing a hey, I'm writing a book on Excel cocktails, and people kind of go, oh. You know, even the photographers, when we did our photo shoot, they kind of took them a couple hours until they went, oh, I get it. It's like if we did Photoshop-themed cocktails. So it's one of those kind of things that takes a while, unless you're a hardcore Excel nerd like many of the millions of viewers of this program. So what I thought I would do is just kind of clarify what's going on with the book, um, when you will get to see it, um, and some other surprises you may not have heard of, and also, uh, and also, we are going to actually take this time to reveal the actual cocktails with <gasps> a little more information about the recipes. Tonight, for me, is sponsored by a, this is a, well, not a broken link, but it's a modified broken link. The broken link is one of the cocktails in our, uh, in our book, but without further ado, let's uh, let me do a little screen share here, and uh, let's see, share that. Okay, so can you all see a PowerPoint slide there? Yep. Excellent. Okay, so here is my authorship progress update. Uh, yours truly is finally, finally releasing some books. Plural. Notice I said plural, um, because all things great, all great things happen in partnerships, I believe. So uh, a guy that uh, might ring a bell for some of your viewers, Bill Jell and Mr. Excel, um, has been writing this Excel 40, the 40 greatest Excel tips of all time, um, and yours truly is involved in that project in um, two capacities. Initially, just the cocktail book alone, and now I'm also involved in co-authoring the greatest Excel tips of all time. And if we have time on the show, we'll, we can talk a little bit about that process and how that's going. But that's, that's the newer part of this whole story. Um, so I'm very pleased to tell you guys that September 2015, just in time for Excel's 30th birthday, is when we aim to release these books. So of course, uh, the, the, the main production, um, Mr. Excel's 40 greatest Excel tips of all time, now also co-authored by yours truly, and of course, if you didn't know this fun little fact of where that, those of you who contributed to the, uh, hmm. the, the crowdfunding thing that Bill put yep. together, um, may, you may have been wondering where the cover, thank you, thank you, thank you guys, you guys helped pay some of my <laughs> residuals, I guess. Um, where did this cover design come from? I did not realize this until I started working with Bill, but he was inspired by Rolling Stone, 10... Uh, and 20th anniversary uh, covers of Rolling Stone magazine. And Bill's a rock and roll fan. He's from Cleveland. Hello, Cleveland. Hello, Spinal Tap. Um, so that's kind of where the inspiration for the uh, first cover design came from. Little fun fact behind the scenes. 
But now it's also coming with the Excel Lover's Guide to Cocktails. That oh. is the working title of um, my book, which will be a co-release with, with Bill's and mine. So that, that's the to kind of clarify any confusion about which book I'm really writing and how all that works. Um, so look for it on Amazon uh, September 2015. So just a little behind the scenes that I thought you guys might enjoy. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, my friends at Berkelhagen Photography. They are based in Cleveland and they are expert food photographers and they did a wonderful job of photographing all of the cocktails that you will be seeing momentarily. Um, here's some behind the scenes uh, from the actual photo shoot. You would not believe what it takes to <laughs> Just get some good photos of 12 Excel inspired cocktails. So that was a really fun experience. It took about a day uh, to shoot all 12 there. And um, fun, fun, fun. But some of you are sitting here going, okay, but what's really, seriously, how do you get from Excel to cocktails and where did that idea, where did that inspiration come from? So what I can tell you about that is Themed cocktails are already a thing in the world of mixology and bartending, right? We've, we've got some Batman themed cocktails here, right? We've got we've got the video gamers. They got their own themed cocktails. You know, it just takes a couple Google searches, you're gonna find some recipe blogs. Gamers have their own cocktails. Disney fans have their own cocktails. All the popular TV shows, Mad Men, Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, all of those kind of cult television shows, they all have these themed cocktails that are developed by, you know, mixologists. So I thought to myself, self Seriously, yeah. I actually I actually researched this. There are more Excel users than there are Walking Dead fans. So I thought, surely there's room in the world for some Excel themed cocktails. So with that, the idea was born. And now you are going to be the first to actually see all of the millions of Excel TV viewers around the world are going to now witness for the first time ever the 12 cocktails that will be uh, full recipes will be re revealed in the book when it comes out in September, but here we go. Wow, this is this is incredible. I just want to say this this is only for our Excel TV VIP viewers. So. <laughs> All right, by Amy Winehouse. So Amy Winehouse for your nice. listening nice. pleasure in the background. Um, first up, we have a, a handful of Excel celebrity inspired cocktails, starting with. The Jitterbug Jellin. You guys may not be aware of this fun fact about Mr. Excel, but apparently once a week he goes ballroom dancing with his 92 years young dad, Robert. And so when he's not shaking his spreadsheet moneymaker, he's shaking it on the dance floor. And this Jitterbug Jellin, he has already tried himself. A little pomegranate, grenadine, rum, lime juice, and bitters. And it's a delicious, kind of summery, very refreshing cocktail there. Um, next yeah. up in the celebrity series, we have Chandu's Condition. Now, this one was named by Chandu. He chose the name himself, um, and it is awesomely chocolatey. It's rum, chocolate syrup, cream, and an emulsified egg. So if the egg part freaks you out, I don't know, maybe we'll leave that off of any cocktail menus we do for uh, <laughs> happy hours and whatnot, but it so gives I, it that nice kind of creamy texture. Oz, you're a, trying to say something. Yes, I have a question about... Um, how does ref this reflect Chandu-ness? How does it reflect us? Because what's not awesome about chocolate and rum? It's like a grown-up smoothie, you know? And, and so it's, and Chandu came up with the name Chandu's Condition. So it, with all of these cocktails, really what makes them Excel-inspired for the most part are the names um, and, and, and the recipes themselves, again, which you know, they'll be revealed in the book, are modern interpretations of classic recipes for the most part. Um, so we've, we've added a twist to some classic recipes and then I matched them up with, with some names. I also interviewed each of the um, Excel celebrities that are featured in the book to find out a little bit more about their own personal, you know, tastes in, in, in drinks um, and I kind of incorporated that into the recipes as well. Uh, I'm so, I'm more unsettled about about the previous drink, the, the jitterbug gel, and I I can't unknow that oh, gel and <laughs> I, I, I can't unknow that, that he goes ballroom dancing. Well, yeah, it's uh, it was right. it was a surprise to me as well, but I thought it was 
I thought it was pretty great. So, and he he I likes know, he likes rum. Bill's a Bill's a fan of rum. Right. So, uh, and he kind of, to my surprise, Bill kind of likes you know fruity, fruity rum cocktails. You know, like I'll order a martini and we'll have something pink and froth. It's quite hilarious. Man, um, I could have so anyway. that. I, I I pegged him for that. I you would say though, I could see. Yeah, I could see Chandu being creamy smooth. I think that's yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's not the way. It's <laughs> not the way of it to say that. But right. I can see that. Oh. That's actually, that's a good description. I'm not uh, going to lie. No, I can't run into that. Scene, I met the guy. <laughs> can't edit that out. <laughs> nope. No editing. All right. Next up, again in the Celebrity Inspired series, the original name for this recipe was the Bloody Alexander. However, Mike Alexander decided to change it to the Control B <laughs> through... Series of conversation. As you guys all know, Mike Alexander, hilarious guy. Uh, had a lot of fun with him, uh, trying to come up with the best recipe for him, and uh, naturally it needed to include bacon. So uh, the Control B, being a bold uh, cocktail that it is, is a modern take on the classic Bloody Mary. But it is. It's actually not like any Bloody Mary you've ever had before. It's uh, bacon infused bourbon. These are special recipes that you can make at home. Um, peppercorn, horseradish, tomato ice, and sadly, I didn't list it on this PowerPoint here, but it, that salt rim is a sriracha salt rim, uh, so you, 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 might, you might enjoy this one. Um, control B, and that's a tomato ice cube that that delicious bacon-infused bourbon is poured over. So you, you make, uh, you mash up some tomatoes, you strain them, you freeze them, uh, into these big ice cubes and then that kind of melts very slowly. So there's no tomato juice in it per se, it's this lovely um, ice cube made of tomato water. All right, that moving right really along. Awesome. It is, it, I've, of course I tasted all of them. They, it was very hard work, this, this project, because I had to taste test all of these and I only had one day to do it, so it was it was a fun photo shoot the next day. This was a popular one at the Santa Clara conference. I was passing out coasters. Uh, everybody was very excited about the Dax on the beach. Uh, vodka, lime, mango, a splash of lemon, lime soda. Uh, back to there are a little out of order here. I didn't have a lot of advance notice for the show, but anyway, back to Excel celebrities again. The Dirty Gervin. So I couldn't leave out Mike Gervin of the five celebrities that are featured in the book. And he, when I asked him what he likes to drink, he said, cheap beer. And I was like, okay, I need a little more. <laughs> okay, cheap beer in a shot. Okay, so we went with cheap beer in a shot. So uh, we, we've got a vanilla-infused espresso bourbon and basically whatever cheap beer you like. And that is apparently what Mike Urban likes to drink. And we added the espresso because I thought, well, you know, Two, what, 2,500 Excel videos and counting. That guy doesn't get a lot of sleep. We better add some coffee into the mix here. So that's where the idea behind the espresso infusion uh, came. Um, and by the way, all these infusions, homemade. I should give a shout out right now to my uh, mixologist, Mr. Eric Ho uh, of Cleveland, Ohio, also. Uh, former aerospace engineer turned mixologist, Excel geek. What perfect guy for the job, right? So um, he has all these crazy ideas and, and, and he's a great guy and you'll hear more about him in the book um, but all of the infusions are homemade um, and the lovely thing about that is you can make those in, a, in you know a batch you know you're not gonna make for example you're not gonna infuse two ounces of bourbon right you're gonna infuse you know a decent bottle so you can have it on your shelf and it'll keep forever it'll keep for a long time because you know the alcohol kills off anything that would would, would make it go bad. So um, whether it's the bacon infusion or the vanilla espresso, all homemade stuff. These are craft recipes, people. Yeah. Like a well-crafted Excel model, they're going to take a little time uh, to make. You know, some of them are going to be not as straightforward as the Dirty Gourbon. Well, Crack open what, a can of beer. I will, I will add that um, you do have to keep whatever you infuse in, um, you have to keep it under the liquid. If it sure. gets above the liquid, yeah. then it can start to rot and mold. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. There's definitely techniques um, that go with uh, with all of these recipes, um, particularly with the infusions. And you know, those kind of things. You, sure, you can buy them in the store. You know, um, Bill's first question to me when I sent him the recipe for the jitterbug gel, and he's I, where am I going to get these ingredients? You know, so he, he wanted something that he could make out of the box. You know, these are craft recipes. Some of them are simple, but some of them are going to take a little time, just like Excel, right? Well, you, so, yeah, because, because yeah. you get that control, because you can add another layer of if you want to infuse vanilla, you get the control of how much vanilla. Exactly. It's much nicer. And of course, the homemade stuff is always going to be better because you're not going to have funny, you know, artificial ingredients and it's, it's just going to taste better, you know. Uh, who wants fake bacon? RC, otherwise known as Rob Colley, um, gin man. He, he loves him some gin, uh, particularly Hendrix. Uh, so we, for the RC columns, uh, we went for a modern spin on um, kind of just like a gin, uh, gingery, lemony, refreshing summer drink there. So Rob gets the RC columns. Uh, Excel, of course, as we mentioned earlier, turning 30 this year, so happy birthday, Excel. Classic software, deserves a classic recipe, rum and coke. It's a party drink. It's not that hard to make. Uh, the roasted lime, again, is a, is a homemade uh, brew, but you can, also, you know, if you want to, you could skimp and, you know, just use regular lime, but it doesn't have the same... Uh, kick that that roasted lime juice will give you. You actually roast limes in the oven and it gives it a really nice um, little extra, almost a little dash of smokiness to that drink. Um, lovely rum and coke. Uh, classic, classic, classic. All right. This is a broken link. Um, sort of like a classic old man's drink. Your basic whiskey, vermouth, and bitters. And uh, if, if that's your if you're a whiskey guy, you'll love the uh, the broken link little uh, slice of orange there to go with it. Give it a little bit of a more of a brighter, fresher um, flavor. The corrupted formula. This has had a, this has had about three different names. It was called the sheet stirrer. Then it was called the illegal formula. It's the corrupted formula. The title may change again by the time the book is released. And so, actually, if anyone has any fantastic suggestions. Um, Feel free to tweet them with the hashtag Excel Cocktails, and uh, there's still time. If 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 we love the title, we might uh, find a way to work your your idea into the book. Um, but anyway, that's the cor corrupted formula: gin, Cointreau, Lilac Blanc, lemon, and creme de vet. And we've got a sparkling swizzle, vodka, and champagne. What could be wrong with that combination? I always say. Um, one of my personal favorites, the stacked column shot. It's tequila, it's a corso, cinnamon, lemon and orange juice and a little bit of bitters. And, and there's definitely a technique involved with this one here to get that stacked column effect, just like when you're making a chart in Excel, right? Um, so yeah, you got to hold the glass a certain way so that the colors don't bleed together. There's also um, it's also important to know which liquids to add first, so they stack on top of each other, they have different densities. So there's a whole art to making stacked column shots like this one. Um, and we've supersized the shot, by the way, in the recipe book. <laughs> all right, the Power Pivotini, where it all started. This was perhaps the first cocktail name I came up with. Um, this one's Navy Strength Gin, Lime Juice, Honey, Elderflower Liquor, Egg Whites, and Bitters, and it is really delicious. None of these are sweet, even the ones that have, you know, honey and, and maybe some syrups in them. Um, I made sure that they were all, uh, you know, not too sweet, not too bitter, just the way I like them. Uh, but you got to try them. You got to try them all. Uh, hopefully this summer we'll be having some, um, I know Bill's on tour. He's got a couple of tour dates in LA coming up in June. So uh, look out on, on Twitter. We'll probably announce some happy hours where we'll hopefully feature uh, one or more of these cocktails. And um, with that, I will um, mention that in addition to the book, we will have downloadable spreadsheets that uh, will serve as templates for the Excel cocktail enthusiasts. So I'm working on some, um, and we may, we may or may not have time to look at them today, but I'm working on some templates that will allow you to 
plan your Excel cocktail party. So you, you'll be able to pick the drinks you want, put in how many guests you have come in and how many drinks you think they're going to drink, and it'll print out your shopping list and come up with your, you know, the, uh, the optimal quantities to purchase of all your ingredients. Um, that turned out to be a little bit bigger of a project than I initially anticipated, but it's, it's coming along. I, I was actually working on it today. Uh, yeah. Fun little quote that I found online, uh, a cocktail journalist, yes, these things exist, at SeriousEats.com, any self-respecting home bartender should have an Excel spreadsheet of favorite classic cocktail recipes. So I am putting together just that. It will include all the cocktails in the book and, and perhaps some more. And uh, with that, I will, um, I will conclude my lecture <laughs> for the moment. Uh, and turn it back to you, Rick. And so I'm guessing on those, you know, on the grocery list, I saw a lot of what's the bitters, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of a lot of bacon. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. That was awesome. I can't wait. Uh, Thank I you. really want to try to control like the, B. I like the way the stack yeah. column looked. It was all cool. Oh yeah. yeah. Very oh. nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Man. So yeah, look for it in September and. Uh, Hopefully, time and budgets permitting, we'll have a few happy hours this summer. Locations to be announced. Maybe LA, maybe Cleveland. Yay, anything could happen between Why now and September. So. Right. Control B. I love that. I love that. I can't wait. <laughs> that's why. That's me. I'm a control. Don't don't I just say Control B? <laughs> you can, no, you I, kinda I, do. I I say control. I look like more like a Control Z. I get it. But. It's a terrible joke. Oh, B. <laughs> All right. That was, uh, I gotta tell you, it was, it was quite entertaining whenever we, uh, you know, whenever we're at the past conference and you, you brought out, I guess, maybe you didn't bring out the book, but you brought out, the uh, uh, you're looking out coasters and different things like that, and then yes. kind of, and what you said was, it was exactly what happened, right? Because not everybody there was for, there for Excel, they were there for business analytics, which may or may not include Excel, depending on what the tool is, and people were like, what? You're doing yeah. what? You're building what? And, and then exactly like you said, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's a slow thinking for most people, right. unless yeah. they're like a hardcore Excel nerd, and then they get it pretty quick, you know. But, but it's one of those things where if you can just set aside that awkward feeling that you get when you're staring at someone who's like, huh? And you just have to go, I know this is a cool idea, and... They'll, they'll either get it or they won't, you know, and it's, it's, it's a glorious moment when they do get it, you know, it's, it's, a real, it's great. So, so, so tell me, um, and maybe this is a little bit for everybody then, um, you know, as, as you looked at that, I mean, you looked at the bacon, and, you know, I was thinking about you quite a bit, Oz, there, about, uh, especially as you're talking about different layers and stuff, I, I'm reminded of every time that you talk about sriracha and how the vinegar is on top versus the bottom, et cetera. So are, are, are there, just kind of for, for the general group, are there particular foods that you think would go well with this sort of stuff? Snack foods. What do you think, Jordan? Hmm. Hmm. Foods. That would pair with well with any of those things. I think, um, let me think. I think uh, with the control B. Breakfast. Um, Hello. Yeah, b breakfast, like, but like a breakfast and a spreadsheet, right? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm eating breakfast. Yeah. I am looking. Looking at a terrible spreadsheet that's just so frustrating at that moment, but I got the control B with me, and I feel like I can handle it. That's it. I mean, that's that's how I feel. Little John Wayne. I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, the, the dirty Gervin, right? And the dirty Gervin was you know, he, every every professor that I've known for the most part. Mike, my Gervin's a professor, but pretty much any professor that I've known, particularly economics professors, have used beer, particularly cheap beer as some sort of an example at some point in the, in the semester, you know, whether it's the law of diminishing returns or, or whatever. Um, so, so as I think about the Gervin and I think about the cheap beer, I think what would go well with that would be probably eggs. Yeah. And, and definitely sure. wheat. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Um, beer, I, I'm not much of a beer drinker per se. I don't really drink beer as a cocktail, but if, I, like, if I'm eating, you know, like hearty German food or something like that, uh, you know, sausages and that type of stuff. A beer actually tastes great, 
and with barbecue, but I'm, as a cocktail, it's not my thing. Um, but, you know, all of these, they, they certainly have delightful things you can pair them with, and, and, and some foods will pair very nicely uh, with certain cocktails. And that's a good point that you raise, Rick, because um, the blog that is finally happening, um, I will have um, these all up on a blog after the book is released, and then we, we will have... You know, we'll have some tips about um, substitutions and things that they go well with, and and you know, because uh, again, like Bill's, his first thing was, well, where where the hell am I going to find Angostura bitters? You know, and I, well, you know, these aren't, it's not an exact science, you know, like Excel. You don't, it's like, hey, if I don't have the lookup, maybe I'll do an index match. You know, you can substitute. So right. there, again, there's an art to these things, and so, we'll we'll address all of those in the blog. So I want to ask you, can, can you like swing through real quick? Swing through them. All I, of them? I, I'm real thinking. Quick. I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, you want me to screen share it again? Let me just rewind yeah. the PowerPoint. I can do that for you, Oz. Well, of course. You. All right. Here we go. Uh, PowerPoint show. Share my screen. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so we've got the jitterbug gentleman. Right. And we've got Chandu's condition. And the control B, great for breakfast. Jack's on the beach, great for summer lovers. Uh, the dirty gerbin, when you're up all night making Excel videos. The RC columns. The Excel Libre, happy birthday, Excel. The broken link for the crusty old pissed off Excel guy when he discovers all those broken links in the spreadsheets. The corrupted formula. The sparkline swizzle. A stacked column shot. Da -da 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 -da. And the power pivot teeny. <laughs> and there you have it. That is the end of the all 12. Right. Excel inspired cocktails. Um, so then, I would be happy to share the photos with uh, with you guys if you want to put a link up there or whatever. We'll work it out backstage. So, but so here, be, here's be revealed. Here's where There's I'm plenty going. more in the book, more surprises. So I <laughs> I'm happy to share this with the world now. Okay. So um, I am thinking the Chandu's condition. Yeah. With a nice, mm. well, it's dessert. I mean, it's dessert no, on its own. No, well, well, I, I, I'm just okay. Okay. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking here. A nice Maduro. Uh, El Rico Habano, maybe. Or uh, maybe a uh, uh, um, sun-grown Fuente that would go okay. well. The Maduro cigar would stand up to that chocolate and, and complement that dessert. Yeah, and you sit down room in a big leather chair with the huge TV. Yeah. And you sit down and have a cigar, and and nothing else matters. And you, I can see that Chandu condition fitting right in there. It's whatever you like with chocolate. I thought you were talking cigars. I don't do the cigars, but yeah, if, if that's your thing, you know. And everybody who doesn't love chocolate, you know. I so I was thinking because like uh, I may have to do some more work. Tonight, and I was thinking the dirty bourbon would be great. <laughs> you know, do an espresso right. bourbon shot, shotgun a cheap beer. I don't know that shotgunning is part of it. <laughs> or you could sip it nicely if you'd like, like a gentleman. Yeah. So I thought that would be great for tonight, you know? Absolutely. Perfect, mm -hmm. perfect mix of my day. Dirty bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So for all of so, you watching, that's uh, take another shot. We said dirty bourbon again. Uh, one more shot. And uh, hey, let's go ahead and wrap this up then and head it on over to uh, Jordan to uh, talk about the topic of the week. 
Sure. So this this topic actually comes from our dear friend Oz. He came up with this. So he says, um, who are the early in the enterprise, so in the business? So, you know, Oz, I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about that. Well, <clears throat> ever since the uh, past conference and a lot of the conversations around that, um, there was a lot of question about who are Excel users because this conference had been going on for a while and it's been primarily uh, SQL people, database admins and, and IT people. And um, over the years they said that, you know, at least the organizers were saying that Excel can't be ignored, but SQL people weren't prepared to talk Excel and Excel users needs in an enterprise. And so they were it's about Excel users. What do you need? Um, and I appreciated that because it felt like we're on a team. We don't need to feud, you know, the stories about all this, this uh, tension and, and animosity between the business and IT. So I've wondered, okay, yeah, we are all on the same team, really. But what roles do we each serve? And I can only speak um, from my experience as an Excel user in an enterprise and outside of an enterprise. Um, you know, what are our roles in this? How do we see ourselves, you know, the four of us? Um, and then what have we seen in our clients when we go out into the wild and see Excel being used and the stories we've heard and, and the firsthand experiences with Excel, Excel users vis-a-vis -vis the... Wow. Wow. And, and I'm going to tell you what. And I'm going to tell you what, too. I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm whoop this on you. This this going in a couple directions. Um, this really hit me when I am teaching my uh, my session, and when it got clear that I was not going to be saying anything about SQL or enterprise level solutions, about a third of the room got up and walked out. And you know, I was okay with the, you know, but I, I understood, understood. I just had to be honest about that. And then I thought about you know. I have worked in enterprise. I was in an enterprise for seven years, but I never was enterprise level solution. But I was a valued member of the enterprise doing a lot of surreptitious things for people because um, IT isn't nimble. You know, when there's one person complaining about something, or you got a hundred clients or customers complaining about something, IT can't stop the enterprise to deal with the one employee or the hundred customers. So that's where I felt like I fit in. And it's also coming out of my blog post recently inspired it. You know, the expel user in post-apocalyptic times was, that's how I saw it. That, that's that's what energizes me to think about this 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 dystopia. All the data has been looted and burned, and who is going to go out there and all the mayhem to get data? The Excel user, because we are nimble enough. The IT person, they, you know, they can't move that fast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think uh, <laughs> the bring in the in this somebody called it a bring your own tools kind of world, and I agree. You know, all the big data hype and whatnot. But you're you're kind of describing. I'm having flashbacks to episode one, that fateful episode where nobody knew what we were doing, uh, <laughs> where we talked about this idea of modern modern Excel, and I think what Oz is talking about is this idea of, you know, empower, you know, it, it, the, these Excel users that you're talking about are the ones that need to be empowered um, to, you know, like like I said, bring your own tools kind of world. Um, 
So the analytics landscape, I think, really is changing, um, and I think I think those Excel users you speak of are really in a in a good good place um, to kind of lead lead the charge. So I I think that's what you were characterizing them. That's how I'm character. But I I wonder I wonder if some of these big data solutions can help the one person in a cube trying to help a hundred customers. Um, because there's also issues already and a desire to bring data and control back behind the, the curtain or inside the six million dollar solution. And I wonder if the six million dollar solution can help Oz who's sitting there and somebody saying, I don't think my commissions are right. Well, Oz can take a week and dig down into that report and find out that the thing is 10 years old and has not changed. But IT, no, they that's not their role. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll jump in a little bit. I, I think that, you know, we'll say your $6 million solution, just as an example. Um, as I go out and I'm, I'm talking to customers about installing those sorts of things, my, my first selling point is always the Excel add-in. The Excel add-in that will connect people who are in finance who are already used to using Excel every single day that will connect them to that multi-million dollar solution. That is what makes it the most usable. Um, and I, I see whenever you're rolling out business intelligence or any of those multi-million dollar type solutions, the first role of IT in that situation is to be a data consolidator and a data provider. Not to be necessarily report developers and building all day in crystal reports and dashboards and all that sort of stuff. Their first thing is to feed Oz Dusele. Their first job should be to feed the people who are in Excel, the people who are out working in the business, solving problems every single day. That should be their primary focus, number one. You know, and after they've done that, and only after they've done that, should they move on to potentially doing things that are a little bit more difficult than doing in Excel. Things, you know, tools that might be specifically designed to build a dashboard, specifically designed to you know, on an enterprise level. But for the most part, I think solution number one for an IT organization rolling out any sort of tool is to feed the analyst and feeding the analyst, you know, through an Excel add-in or some sort of way to where they can get around and tools are already used to is, is what's the most useful. So I think that, you know, it's not just important that um, you know, I usually always say it's not about the technical skill and the analytical skills. And it's more about analytical skills. And I don't, I mean, I'm not going to challenge my normal line of thinking, but I have been thinking a lot lately um, that, you know, the new stuff that we, like, get, like the new Excel stuff, like Power Pivot, Power BI, a lot of organizations are just so far behind that even the ones that try to get it, you know, they don't have the right specifications. They're still arguing over regula regulations, all that stuff within their organizations, that it's going to, they're, they're just years away from it. I mean, maybe a decade. I mean, a long time away. So it's still important that we know this stuff, this stuff that's considered old stuff now. And I think those were the, pe the people who know that stuff in organizations are the original, you know, IT saboteurs who just, you know, did their own sort of self-service IT on their computers. Um, and that is really the role of Excel users in many ways is to, like, be the alternative to the giant project that may never happen, or even stuff that isn't so giant, just technology that, you know, you go see at the con at conferences, you're like, oh, this stuff is awesome. I can't wait till we oh, get it. Man. We're 10 years away, even though we're starting today. Man. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, like, there's, a, there's a little bit of an evolution, though, right? So there's, um, um, at first, analysts are out building things in their own spreadsheets. We'll say. They're building all of their own calculations, they're doing all their own data cleansing, they're doing all their own, etc. And they may, we'll just say they're, they're calculating, I don't know, headcount. Or they're doing some calculation they have to do over and over from one spreadsheet to the next, to the next, to the next, or from one file to the next, to the next. There, there comes a risk at that point that you have calculations in too many different places, and once the logic changes, you've got to think about all the different places. Oh, man. That logic is that. And so I've been down this road enough to say, you know, there comes a point to where, uh, to where if you can have specific logic that is used over and over at 
at a level, maybe that's at the database level, start moving that closer and closer towards the database so that it cascades to all of your reports and to all of your ad hoc tools like Excel. So there becomes an evolution of that. But I think first things first is, um, is, is to be the analyst and then secondly to figure out from the analyst what are their repetitive sorts of things that you can put into a database where they can get to it more easily. Yeah, repetitive. Man, you so, oh man, Jordan, you had me thinking that, Rick, I want to get back to what you're saying. Jordan had me thinking about these episodes of Naked and Afraid, where you got people that they're sitting there, they, they got um, somebody's okay, they're going to eat the worms, and they found some root that they can eat, and then somebody says, look, we need more calories than worms and roots. I'm going to go try to get a pig or a bird or something. I'm going to try. And that's how I think about the, um, the Excel person is the one that is say, you can stay here and eat worms and be safe and stay alive and survive. Yes, you will be alive at the end of this 21 days. But I'm going to eat a pig. And I will, I will share it. it. That's, that is the Excel user. Um, and Rick, you have me think about, um, yeah, when there are business rule changes, what are ways that an enterprise can be set up when there is something like, um, yeah, this report has been good for, for 10 years, but then there was a, a business rule change, something like, um, okay, we'll give you the revenue share that you've been asking for for the past five years. Great, they sign all the contracts and stuff. How does it get into the canned report that comes out every month? I, I'm not sure I completely followed the question. Okay, so, so if you have a, a canned report that's been great, right. and then there is an agreement later that there is a branch that's been asking for a revenue share. Okay, we're going to give it to you. Somebody over here who is just in a routine of running a report every month and reporting something or paying money out of it or whatever, and the revenue share piece never gets into that stream of who needs right. to change the report. Right. And, and this, this comes a bit into um, what we talked about a, a little bit about evolution of how data gets cleansed and where calculations happen. And so as things evolve and, and usually the evolution, unless you have a person who comes in, some sort of consultant comes in and says, okay, here's the way your strategy is going to be and here's how things are going to evolve and here's why we're going to do things at a particular level, most people can't afford that, right? right. And, and so for most, most people, it's not some big strategy, it's just an evolution. And there are certain things that will that you that you know will evolve, or that you see that will evolve. Number one, we talked about a few different before a few different layers that you go through of data cleansing. The same thing is with report calculations, yeah. right? Well, you'll, no, can, you'll start. Can I, go ahead. Just want to uh, inject. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'm glad that you mentioned the whole cost thing because that's what kind of frustrates me with a lot of, a lot of solutions and stuff um, is there isn't so much consideration about cost and why don't you just update the report? Well, because it costs money and there's upheaval involved. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah, so, so, so what, what, costs less in the, what costs less in the short term is building something in a report. Right, and building mm -hmm. something in the spreadsheet, and that's the reason you know Excel's so pervasive. It's so it's stuff that we could just we could be nimble with, right, and we can kind of move around the data. Uh, there, there does come a point to where there are so many spreadsheets and there's so much risk because so many calculations are done in 15 different ways in different spreadsheets that it makes sense um, to move things one layer up so that as you're receiving the data, the data already has that calculation in it. And not only that, the other department that you were talking about, the other department is getting that same feed from the same place, and it already has a calculation at it. So there comes a point to where it makes sense that you're not doing as much of your of your logic in the report layer because of the risk there, but you start doing that, you know, a little bit closer to maybe a database layer in a data warehouse, 
And then, even then, there's ETL logic that brings data from different systems into a data warehouse. So there comes a point, and this is, at this point you're talking Fortune 500 companies where they say, okay, well, even that's too much of a risk. There's too many calculations going on to the data warehouse, and they'll move out to the different systems and say, we're going to make sure that logic is, is at that point you're doing a, a big uh, data governance program, and it's getting real messy, but there are certain evolutions that people go through. And for most of us, we'll never evolve to that. I mean, we don't need to worry about that. And, and all we need to worry about is, is how do we get our uh, – IT needs to feed us data, right? And there will come a point where there's too much risk of everything that we're doing in our calculations and our spreadsheets that we'll have to ask IT to update some of the logic into their database. And, and I think that that's, that's the role for the most part, or should be. Right. Right. Any closing Sylvia. thoughts on this? Jordan, Sylvia? Well, I think to maybe try to put a little bow on it, <laughs> I yeah. think all of these role, roles are changing. And to right. back to, to circle all the way back to Oz's original kind of opening uh, statement, where, where do the Excel people fit in all of this? And if by Excel people you mean people like us, people watching the show, I think we are the ambassadors uh, to kind of, you know, be the go-between between, between the IT the, and, and, the, and the reporting people and the analysts um, to kind of bring those worlds together. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I believe in all the modern Excel and the world is changing, all that kind of stuff, I believe it. And I also know from my own experience that I've spent you know, many, many years being the liaison between IT and, and finance and, and reporting and, and, and planning. And, and so I, 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 that's where I see it going. I see us being ambassadors between those two worlds to bring them together. I, I agree with you. Um, I think like it's, to uh, teach the world to sing. Right. So, <laughs> IT's job feed us and uh, well, well, I, 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 I had something there. That's on there because one thing is I, I in my bones I feel like I am so tired of talking about enterprise and big data, but it's not going anywhere. It's, it's the reality. Right. But there's so much other goofy stuff going on. Is when you know uh, the slide comes up at at past BAC that. 80% of big data solutions never get finished or adopted. Now, I don't know how accurate the 80% is, but but that's a high number. What is going on? And then you think about the, the politics and everything else and how famous company that's known for having strong arm tactics for you to buy their um, report, their um, their technical services in addition to the software and then it doesn't work but at least the person who pushed it doesn't look bad because he didn't hire you know two dudes from San Diego to do the solution you know so there's, there's all this stuff of, of people worrying about if they're going to look like a dope afterward if it doesn't work um, in fighting between departments that you'll never understand and that's why I've liked working more with um, smaller companies. Um, and one thing is, you know, I had somebody contact me. She said, Oz, man, this commission's a messed up here. And can I get you a, an arrangement to talk with the owner, maybe even fly out here? And it didn't take long to find out that the so-called data mess was really uh, um, cover for some shady stuff company we could okay. get to that easier and know okay we leaving this alone but in an enterprise they might spend the money and let you do stuff and and block you and guide you and you don't know what's going on well, speaking of uh shady stuff hey Oz, how yeah. about you bring us all to the tip section all right the hot tips and i'm gonna tell you Grab your milkshake, baby. All right. I'm going to share my screen. I have a tip. Um, mm -hmm. 
Okay, so you can see my spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So it's post apocalypse. Can you make your um, spreadsheet where it yes. the page, please? Maximize uh, that shiz. Yeah, see, I, I never do that. I, um, <laughs> I, I, then people send me stuff that's 100%. No, no, I'm, I'm, I gotta do it. I gotta do this a certain way because then okay. I, I completely lose the edge of my uh, spreadsheet. Gotcha. I didn't know it was such a craft <laughs> maximum <laughs> craft window. Okay. So here we have. I'm having a problem here some technical issues. All right, so it's post-apocalypse. We are, I hear some echo. We are locked away, some survivors. We are in the rubble of an old sandwich shop. And we need to have some idea of how much time we have before our demise. So what I, we're going to do is build a timeline in Excel. So I'm going to come out of here. I'm going to come out of my table. Okay, so I've got the dates. The apocalypse happened on the 11th of May, 2019. And we want to know when will we have no food, no water, when will things be dire, and when will it be over? And then we're tracking today. And we have calculations over here for what we have. Okay. But the main thing I want to point out is making this timeline. So we the approach of the Grim Reaper. So I'm going to insert a scatter plot. Right. I'm going to select my X values. That's going to be the date. My Y values are going to adjust the height of these labels so that they don't start bumping into each other. So you can already kind of see a timeline is taking shape. I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need that. That makes no sense to us. Okay. Now what I want to do is her bars. I'm going to get rid of these. And then these I want to format. Format these error bars so that we just have the minus and go down here and make this 100%. Oh, okay. Now we want to add some data labels and we want to, okay, so let's move that a little bit because of what I'm getting ready to do. Okay. That I want to the value from sales. And it's going to be this. And get rid of that Y value. That makes no sense. All right. So now we can see 
when the apocalypse started and today that's important and when we start to get in trouble and what this uh this label hype does for us is if things were too cluttered up like water and dire so if water and dire were both say um say that was 15. see that starts to overlap so you have ways this label this column helps to keep things out of the way so let's um let's make this 10. okay so now what we're going to do is i'm going to change this label so that it's more meaningful file okay That's when it's about over. And what I'm going to do is get rid of demise because the picture of the green ripper is enough. And we're going to change this one. This is when the apocalypse happened. And let's put today so that we know. Make this red. So now here is our timeline. And this changes, this is dynamic. So if today becomes, uh, say today is, let's say, 23 July 19, oh, we have no food left. We have water. Something has to happen fast. And then maybe somebody does find, okay, um, okay, so we just got ourselves three days. So there you have it. Cool. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. That's all we get is three days out of eating people. It seems like, hey, it seems like a bad hey. investment to me. What about Whoa. eating pets? Where does that come in? Because I'm not doing that. I'm just putting that out there right now. Well, the thing you is, you, you might get <laughs> to no, heave you're whole. You're going to feel you, differently about this. No, no. You, you might get to heave whole from the community. I don't care. I am not eating Danny Moon. My next hey, two cats. But, my next two cats are going to be named Index Match. That's all I know. All right. So oh, so I'm not. Cool. E I'm not eating them. I will go straight to. Hey, the, I will. I will face the Grim uh, Reaper first. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, Sirachi's on that one. I, you know, I'm going to give. Um, I'm going to give four Sirachis on that. On building a. No, because it, it was um, it was an issue last night when I was trying to um, show how a report was not looking, how a report should have looked from the last date backward instead of from the first date forward, and to see it on a timeline it was easier to get. And um, also, I'm getting tired of, of um, business applications. Because you're going to be in the rubble of that sandwich shop one day in the darkness, wondering how much longer. All right. <laughs>
Thank you for that. Um, also, uh, see, uh, uh, Sylvia, you have a you have a tip as well. I have very I have a a tip that is quick. What do you guys think about that? Um, <clears throat> so sharing my screen here, um, and maybe if I'm fortunate enough to be back on the show, you know, sometime between now and the book release, uh, we can get into more detail on how this. This uh, cocktail uh, party model is coming along, but in the meantime, I will just share that the um, in my research of uh, you know looking at what's out there in terms of how do people come up with a cost for a cocktail. Uh, there's a couple you know shout outs that I want to give. A barabove.com has um, a pretty handy, very simple spreadsheet that allows you to put your ingredients in, the amount um, that you use. Oops. Little sensitive mouse there. Um, purchase quantities. You can even put in if if you're actually in the bartending business, um, your expected cost of goods sold, target menu price, and it comes up with a, a way to cost uh, your cocktail, so you can actually make money at the bar. So that was kind of a a cool um, cool spreadsheet that I found made by a bartender. Uh, the other one, spreadsheet one two three dot com, has a more detailed uh, version of. I don't know why this is. PowerPoint has a mind of its own today, sorry. Um, Spreadsheet123.com, the link's there. Again, I'm happy to share it on your, your wherever you want, on your Excel TV site. A uh, link to that. Um, it offers a lot more additional, a lot more detail in terms of, you know, putting prices in for uh, specific ingredients that you want to buy, looking at minimum purchase quantities versus the actual quantity that you need to purchase, stuff like that. So these were all things that, um, you know, I was looking at just to give myself some ideas. But in the, the, the interim, what I found out is nobody uses the convert function. And this is one of those functions that I file under, where, where has this been all my life? Because when I first started this thing, it's one of those really simple things. I didn't know it was out there. And all this time I was doing these crazy, you know, conversion tables. And then I came across this and I was like, what? So this is my Excel tip. Really easy. Check out the convert function. In A1, let's say you have one liter and you want to convert it to pints. All you need is convert. Convert one, the units to convert from L. Uh, PT. Now, where did I come up with L and PT? I will show you that. Can you still see my screen here? I'm going to share a different application now. Um, now we are going to look at my Excel screen, so you guys should be able to see that. All right? Okay. Here we go. Blank spreadsheet. Really simple. One liter. How many uh, pints is that? Convert. I'm going to make this wider so you guys can see it as I'm typing. I always like to do that. Convert. Convert that number from, and it pulls up, so you don't have to memorize the, the units, of course. It pulls up all these um, options to choose from, some of which I have never heard of. I don't know, what, what's a slug? <laughs> I don't know what a slug is. I'm not sure. But so I go down here. I find somewhere down here we're going to find leader. Uh, there we go, leader. Two unit converted to whatever you want. U.S. pint. Let's look at U.K. pint. It's probably bigger than a U.S. pint. I'm gonna guess, but that's that's all there is to it. So of course, with these arguments, you know, you could also, you know, you don't have to bake them into the formula like this. You could you could have them in a separate cell or something like that. Uh, but I thought that was a cool function uh, for all you bartenders out there. Yeah, I love that yeah. function. And it's so great. It works does. for time. Yeah, like it converts, you know, hours to days and seconds to hours and the other way around. So it's it's really handy and it saves you having to, you know, go to Google every time you're like, how many milliliters is in a gallon, you know? Saves you all of those kinds of um, things. Although I have to complain now to Microsoft because, um, oh, let me go back in here. Uh, the thing that was missing... Like, you can't, it doesn't have milliliters, you know, so I have to, and of course, you know, metric, you, you, you know that a milliliters is a thousand, or a thousand milliliters is one liter, but it doesn't, you know, so then you have to do the fractions in your head, or, but there's no milliliter option. So all I know is Excel team, why are you biased against bartenders? And the reason that's a problem is because a lot of spirits are sold in 
um, 750, you know, three quarter milliliter or three quarters of a liter bottles, mm -hmm. 750 yep. milliliters. Yep. So I don't have a milliliter option here. So the, the, it's, it's not completely an exhaustive list. Um, so if you have, if you're working with milliliters, you have to just, you know, if this were, I would have to just call this, you know, uh, three quarters of a liter or whatever, whatever the case may be. So there, there may be some conversions you still have to kind of do quasi manually, but the convert function is super handy for um, for planning your Excel speakeasy cocktail party. Yeah. No. All right. Um, now please yeah. show show what happens when you try to convert some things that don't convert, like like um, what. Like um, like to table, yeah, tablespoons to horsepower. Tablespoons to what? Horsepower. <laughs> I don't know. I've never tried that. Okay, so here we have. I did notice there's. It's got barrel. Okay, horsepower. Where's tablespoon? Okay, so let's convert. How many? <laughs> One teaspoon equals what in horsepower? Well, let's go with tablespoon. Convert that to, where's horsepower? Did I pass it up already? Or light years. Or light years. Okay. Well, let's, some of these, what's the it looks gross like registered it. ton? Cubic like nautical it. mile. Cubic yard? How about cubic yard? Okay. Sure. So some weird number that doesn't make any sense. So obviously you need to know a little bit about what you're doing before you dive into the convert function because this is, well, Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say what it didn't give you is options there for the second thing. It didn't give you the option of year. It didn't give you the option of time. It like it only gave you things that were that were measurements that were consistent with tablespoons. With right, so it only it only so in theory these are all liquid volume measurements is what you're saying, Rick? Uh, that's what it appears to be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Maybe they've up upgraded it. Well, like what if I said how many? Um, Okay, so if I start from scratch for that argument, where's all my time measures? I thought this had time measures. Where's my minutes and seconds and, oh. Meter Does it not, Jordan? Does know. it not have? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not a, I convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. That's all I do. Okay. Very okay, so, so here's a question for you. Which version of Excel are you using? 2013. 2013? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I might have a few things to suggest to Microsoft on this one. Because, you know, they're always so responsive to all my suggestions so far. <laughs> but anyway, check out the convert function for, for you know, simple things like, uh, you know, teaspoons to tablespoons or tablespoons to gallons. That kind of stuff, it's really handy. So. Yeah. What do you think all about right. that? Alice? Cool. All right. Um, this is interesting because I am... Playing with it on the 26 previous um, does filter out, and once I put in the first one, it will only give me um, reasonable options after. Right. So, so what is your uh, sriracha ranking on that? Hmm. What is your sriracha, sriracha. on that? Oh. <laughs> All right. You need. You need five for reminding us that it does exist. Yes. Thank you, Oz. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, I remind everybody that I, I am apocalypse ready. That's for fun and profit. Awesome. So let's uh, let's move on to the what's up section. So what's going on in your neck of the woods? So a, a few things. Um, so, so first off, I, I am working with some people in the financial services industry, and we're working on a uh, an offering right now, uh, a, a website, a website that will be the hub, we hope, uh, a central place for all Excel competition. And so, you know, as, as any competition that's happening, whether that's a, a dashboard contest or a financial modeling competition or any even the challenges that we do on this website, well, there's lots of other places that do Excel challenges on a pretty regular basis as well. So you know, I am working right now along with some other people on putting together a website that kind of brings all of that into one place. So that, that's number one. Uh, number two, I have some other things to share with you. Uh, there will be, there'll be more news on, on that as, as, as we move forward on that. So 
Let's go to my entire screen here. Let's share. And hopefully you can see uh, see the office blogs here. Uh, confirm you can see my spread. You see my yeah, desktop. Yeah, we okay. got it. So, so first off, over here on the office blogs, uh, something that came out here on May eighth. So this is like just after our last show. Uh, Eleven updates to Power Query. So not only can you download Power Query here, but there's just a lot of new stuff that has that's come out. So I would suggest you come up here to you know, the Office blogs and do a quick search for updates to Power Query. We'll also have a link to this you know, down below in the, you know, in the video description. We'll take a look at that. Secondly, a really great blog recently about you know, from Charles Williams, Mr. Fast Excel, around timing of Excel formulas and calculations. And, you know... Uh, how would you go about figuring out what you should measure, whether that's elapsed time versus CPU time, overhead versus calculation versus screen repaint time? There's just a ton of information in here on, you know, if you're trying to speed up your calculations, how do you go about doing that? Not only how do you go about doing it, but what sort of things should you measure? So... That is it's awesome. That, that's it for me. I'd, I'd recommend that everybody go out and take a look at that. I believe that, um, Sylvia, you also had something to share? Um, well, I've, I've, I've shared much of it. You guys know about the two books. Um, my blog is finally coming up for real, I swear to God. And it will feature the recipes and substitutions and, you know, a myriad of other exaltainment uh, related things. Um, other than that, uh, it was great seeing you guys at the Excel conference. Um, oh, and for any of our, uh, or at the past conference, sorry, not an Excel conference. But it is, it was, it was great. Um, this uh, next month, June 22nd and 23rd, I believe, um, my, my pal Bill Jellin and writing partner will be in L.A., so any of you um, California folks, Southern California folks, uh, please be sure to check periodically on Twitter. One of us will announce a happy hour, and hopefully we will be featuring an Excel cocktail or two, or all 12. Kind of depends, but um, June 22nd, 23rd, I believe. Uh, so so look out for that. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, Oz, you got something as well? Okay, I'll just have some brief here. Um, Okay, um, the Activist Mobile is a nonprofit conference that happens at Portland State University every year and it's been going on for about 30 years. And it's a lot of nonprofit information. It's uh, the 17th of July through the 19th of July. Registration just opened yesterday. And they will be talking about things like you know, board development, executive director training, but we're doing something new. I am going to be teaching a five-hour Excel workshop. Yay. Yes. Um, and this happened because um, I was talking with one of the organizers, and she said that um, they have all of this data and, and fight with Excel, but then the focus is still on, um, you know, like grassroots organization and, and managing donors. And I'm really excited about this because I get to go in and let you analysts, you are data managers. Your title might be volunteer coordinator, but you are a data analyst and get to share some knowledge on how to track data, track important data in Excel. So, all right, cool. Uh, I'm trying to share my screen here. Great. All right. Oh, and that uh, is uh, westernstatescenter.org. Cool. In the nonprofit world. Is that Oz? Um, yep. So, lastly, you know, where can you find us? Gosh, we're all over the place. But in addition to that, yeah, there's there's a there's a few things that have been going on lately within the within the Excel TV community. I'd like to share my screen just real quickly and show you two of them. Number one is our website, which has really started to get some traction here recently. Uh, we'll say over the last month or so. 
Uh, so we'll share that with you. Also, uh, what one of our groups is really starting to take off as well. So I want to make sure that you're you're aware of where to find us there. So uh, quickly, first off, you come over to Excel.tv, Excel.tv, and what we do here, um, all of our different um, all of our different segments of our shows, a good portion of those are tips, etc., and you know our topics and all that sort of stuff. We turn those into blog posts. A good portion of those. So if we'll just we'll click on this one just as an example. And one of, in our last episode, we talked about what have you conquered in Excel. And there's quite a few items here that we we go through and making out a blog post. And also you'd end up having you know the video as well, which is just that segment. So if there's just parts of the show that you're interested in, you'd like to take a look at. Uh, certainly, I would encourage you to come over here and you could look at our Excel tips or our news or any of the areas up here across the top that have to do with our show. Um, also, you can look through any of our previous episodes from season one or season two and we'll just look at season two as an example here and within season two you can see actually the show that we're doing right now if you wanted to you could have come in here and watch this show live if you chose to so this is actually yeah you know, where some of the people are watching the show live right now um, so I encourage you all to come over to excel.tv secondly is our Facebook group which right now, as you see, is at 600 or 956 members. So we're rolling up to about 1,000 members or so, less than a year old out there on Facebook. So I'd like to uh, thank everyone who is part of the you know, part of the conversation out there. But as you scroll down, you'll see things from Mike uh, Benstead, who has some questions around VBA. So it's just uh, it's a pretty robust conversation, even the spreadsheet, spreadsheet guru and quite a few other places are out here. And you'll also see quite a few of our videos as well. So I'd like to encourage you all to come out there and check out our Facebook group as well. Go out there and put Excel.tv. And the great thing about that is, heck, it's free. So, so um, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, Sylvia, it's always a pleasure to have you back. You know you are, you're our very first person. You've always come back and been part of the show, and it's been great to see uh, not only your consulting business out there in California grow and continue to develop, but also now you're moving into other things like your, like the book that is coming out and starting to get more into the blogging side and everything else. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for being a part of the show and, uh, and being a friend of the being a friend of the show. Aww. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Yes. Cool. Well, everyone, until until next time. Uh, this is Rick Rantham here with uh, Jordan Goldmeyer and Oz Du Soleil. Say it until next time. Keep on excelling. All right.